The key to understanding and being able to manage mole fractions within Dalton's law is your knowledge and understanding of the ideal gas law. Dalton's law, remember, says that the total pressure in of a mixture of gases is the sum of the partial pressures of each one of those gases. Add them up to get that total pressure. Well, this really suggests that the pressure exerted by a given gas will be the same regardless of whether or not you have any other gases present. Sometimes people have a little difficulty getting that point. Of course, if a reaction occurs, all bets are off, but we're not talking about a reaction situation. We're talking about a mixture of gases, and the gases will exert, they each will exert its own individual pressure regardless of whether or not other gases are present. In other words, the total pressure on a mixture of gases is the sum of the pressures of the constituent gases. Or to state it a little bit of another way, the total pressure of a mixture of gases is the sum of the partial pressures of the constituent gases. But you remember from your ideal gas law that PV equals NRT, or if you will, that pressure is equal to moles times R times T over the volume. In that case then, the total pressure is equal to the moles of A times RT over V plus the moles of B times RT over V plus the moles of C times RT over V, etc., etc. And factoring out RT over V, we have that the total pressure is equal to the sums of the moles of the constituent gases times RT over V. Now what this does right here is tell us that the pressure of a mixture of gases depends on how many moles of those gases we have. And it doesn't matter what the gases are. And if it depends on how many moles of the gases we have, then it means it depends on the number of gas molecules that are present, regardless of what those gases are. Let's look at a case. Mole fraction. Do you remember what mole fraction is? Mole fraction is the moles of one thing over the total moles present. If it's a mixture of gases, it's the moles of one of the gases over the sum of all of the moles of the gases that are present. The sum of the mole fractions will equal 1. The sum of the mole fractions will equal 1. So the partial pressure of a gas and a mixture of gases may very well be thought of as the mole fraction of A, that fraction, times the total pressure. That will give you the partial pressure of gas A. Or another way of saying it is that the mole fraction of A, and that's what that funny looking X is, the mole fraction of A times the total pressure is equal to the pressure of that particular gas A. Or the mole fraction of A may be found by taking the pressure of A over the total pressure. Do you see that? So we can find the mole fraction by putting moles of A over total moles, or we can find the mole fraction of A, if it's a gas, by putting the pressure of A over the total pressure of all of the gases involved. Here's a problem. If a gas mixture composed of 3.2 grams helium, 4.9 grams oxygen, and 5.5 grams argon exerts a total pressure of 980 torr, What's the pressure of the helium itself? Well, the first thing we have to do is find the moles of each gas. So let's start with 3.2 grams helium. The moles of helium is equal to 3.2 grams of helium times one mole over four grams. That means then that we have eight tenths mole helium. Now let's find the moles of oxygen. The moles of oxygen is 4.9 grams times one mole over 32 grams. That means we have 0.15 mole of oxygen. 
The mole of argon is 5.5 grams times one mole over the atomic weight of argon, which is 40 grams per mole. And that gives us 0.14 mole of argon. Now, we want to know the pressure of helium, so we need to find the mole fraction of helium. To find the mole fraction of helium, we take the 0.8 moles of helium over the sum of all of those moles, 0.8 plus 0.15 plus 0.14. That gives us the mole fraction of helium. Then to find the pressure of helium, we just simply multiply that by the pressure, 980 torr. And when we do, we find that the pressure of the helium by itself is 719 torr. Do you get the idea? So the combination of knowledge of the ideal gas law and your understanding of mole fractions, you have a lot more versatility in working problems that utilize gases. Brought to you compliments of the chemistry professor, offering complete chemistry courses on DVD. Visit us at our website on the World Wide Web, chemistryprofessor.com.